talking about that stuff. This part two of it. I like that. Okay. So you mentioned about it was a whole big difference as far as being here in America and being overseas in the military. Yeah. All, all the things that you had a chance to see, things that you witnessed that yes, we sir. did not see here. Even the news that we get here in our country, you got different news there. Yes, sir. So there's always a different narrative of yeah. what's going on because no one really knows. Someone else yeah. writes that narrative for us. Yeah. But your experience now coming back here, and, I, and I've been listening to you for a number of years, and a lot of things I hear here, that has not been all of your experience. No, no. I mean, it's, a lot of things. No, it's, I mean, I would say since I've gotten back here, I, I would say I go back to being African American. That's the biggest difference for me coming back from the military, getting out the military, coming back to the United States. I go back to being a nigga, Negro, as most people call it, man. I mean, because again, that's the way our history has been written to where they create these narratives for people to always have this divide. You know, to um, they always say in our constitution or whatever is written that together we stand divided, we fall. Well, I believe they keep us divided for a reason because they understand that we would ever wake up and realize that it's not black versus white, but it's those who in power want to stay in power. Mm. They can they can keep us like stuck in this mindset mm. to where versus us fighting the real issues, we fight issues that aren't really issues like the black versus white thing for me. That was an issue at some point, but when I go back and I read about a lot of that stuff, I mean, it's just like the way I read it and the way I perceive it, I get why white folks did what they did, especially if somebody sells me something and this something helps build what I'm trying to build. And I look at it as I have a certain entitlement to it, like me, like a safe place in my house. I buy my house. I don't expect nobody else to tell me how to take care of my house, how to live in my house, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And at one time, economically, Black folks was property because why? They were sold by their own people to a different group of people to do a job. And those who felt like they were entitled to do whatever they wanted to do with this property that, you know, we were considered to be, they felt like they could do whatever it is. Am I saying that was right? No, I'm not saying it was right for what happened, but I don't look at it from the perspective of, oh, the white man this and let's rise up against the white man. I, I don't look at it like that because again, when you leave America, it's not about color, man. It's about the wealthy and the poor, <laughs> which truthfully and honestly in America, that's really what it is. It's the wealthy folks versus the poor people. But to keep the poor people fighting, they gotta have, a, they gotta create these narratives to where it's black versus white, black versus Asian, you know, Asian versus Mexican, like, you know, all this different stuff, like they have to keep that because again, as long as you sit there trying to fight against your neighbor, with the Bible called loving your neighbor, it's hard to do that. Like you can't love your neighbor as thyself if you hate him. And I mean, as a Christian, you have to do that. You, you got to love your neighbor. I don't care what your neighbor do to you, you got to love him. So it's just like, they keep folks in that mindset that I can't be a part of. I refuse to be a part of, not just because I'm a Christian, but it's because I've seen things outside of where I'm from. And it's just like, how could I go back to being blind or living with that sheep mindset to where I'm stuck in a certain, you know, with a, with a certain mindset? Like, I can't be that crab in the bucket. You know, they always say crabs in the bucket always pulling each other back mm -hmm. down. We never getting out this bucket. So, I mean, I, I can't live like that. I, I just refuse to. And that's what I believe if I go back to playing that whole black versus white narrative stuff, I feel like I'll be doing that. Like, I feel like I'll be doing myself injustice because, again, one of my best sergeants ever in the military, Barry Moose, if I can say his name, um, my wife called him her daddy. Man, I love that dude. He was a white guy from Pittsburgh. And he hated us calling each other Negroes. And this is a white guy. But one of the things I can remember is I remember moments when I almost died in Afghanistan. My life was at hand. Now, I know it was the Lord who kept me, but he had this guy in place in my life the way he saved our lives because of his decision making. And we made it back from Afghanistan because of him. And every time I get to talk to him, even to this day, I tell him I love him and I thank him for what he did because, I mean, it wasn't about color for him. It was about 
y'all my troops and I'm gonna take care of y'all. Sometimes we were put on dummy missions. We were made to do things that didn't make sense, but he would always find a way to make sense of what didn't make sense because he was like, hey, I don't agree with what we about to do, but at the same time, you know, we under the orders of this commander, so we got to do what we got to do. We don't have no time to, you know, a politic about what we got to do. We got to do this mission. We got we got to go out there and accomplish it. So at the end of the day, let's go. And that's how it was. So like I, I, I to this day would say, next to my pastor Barry Moose is like they, like they, they almost neck to neck because you know those two, those are the one of the, those are the two type of gentlemen in life that I want to be outside of. You know, like my dad, man, because they, they, they real hardcore, old school, no nonsense guys. That when it comes to mission and orders. Hey, we about to do this. We we not finna question why we just gonna do it, and that's and to me that's a leader who don't 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 fold under pressure. Like they they just they just take the bow by the horn and they ride, man. I like that. I like the fact that you also mentioned that to take something that doesn't make any sense and take whatever makes sense out of that to make it happen regardless of yes, situation sir. and try to figure out. I think that although that was a military experience, in a sense that also applies to our life. Yes, when sir. things happen, this makes some sense out of something that doesn't make any sense whatsoever to make sense out of it. I like yes, that. Sir. That's that's a lot. How many places were you stationed? Different uh, different uh, countries or? So my first duty station be Korea. I was there for twelve months. I left Korea, went to Fort Hood. I was there for approximately I would say two two and a half years. But out of that two and a half years that I was supposed to be there. I spent 15 of those months in Afghanistan. So I was in Afghanistan for a whole 15 months. Once I got back, um, because of, and we just talk about that in another time, um, I reclassed it needs of the army. I got my, my MOS, my job, changed from being a diesel mechanic to an MP. So I went to Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri for a time so I can go through MP school as a you know soldier, I mean, as a regular okay. soldier. And then once I left there, I went to Guantanamo Bay, Cuba for a whole um, year and then to be with my wife because she was in the military too, um, which is your niece. Um, I went to Germany for like a year and a half. So most of my time was spent overseas. And that's why I say like my perspective is way different about things because majority of my time I spent overseas in the jungle, as I call it. Like I got to see life outside of the U.S. And I think the Lord purposely did that because he wanted me to see that it was bigger than color. It's it's bigger than that. I mean, it's 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 a bigger picture. And and a lot, and a lot of times when you grow up in a certain area, geographical location is hard for you to see that bigger picture. And I believe because of the times we living in now, I would say on the spiritual side, I had to see that. I had to see that it was more to this life than what people say it is. So now people can't create a narrative for me because I got to see it all. I like that perspective of it. Being 65, I'd be 66 in two months. I like that because when I grew up here in Houston, although I came from what they consider the ghetto, one of the wards here, but how I grew up and where I grew up working as a kid, I worked in department stores. First I did uh, supply, then I got the display. And as a young kid, uh, it was just amazing to me to meet the people, like you mentioned, it's not always about color. Because I was very, I got I was very gifted at certain things. Or let me just say, let's say it this way: I received a lot of gifts that yes, I sir. that only thing I saw in the '60s, 1960s. We're talking about Martin Luther King. I seen a lot of death here. We, you kill the president, you shoot the president. They his brother Martin Malcolm, and there were other people as well. So when I grew up in the '60s, we saw a lot of violence. We saw a lot of racism. We saw a lot of things that they that you would probably never see again in the news because the life in the country in this country did not change until people could really see it in pictures. Yeah. When they start shooting the news and the dogs that they had and most of the police, it, it's something that is nowhere near like it used to be. Trust me, it was pretty rough. But also in our black communities, what color black were you? Uh, different things because you have you see a lot of blacks that are not all black like we may be there's different colors to blacks and what their parents had to experience i remember in certain parts of houston here the people that worked 
at a lot of places where the Jews, the Jewish people may have uh, lived or the whites before the Jewish came in. It was all white neighborhood only. So we were not allowed to go in those neighborhoods when I was a kid. You could only go in if you were working and you had to be dressed like you were working. You had to dress in some type of uniform to show that you were working and you could only be on the bus at certain times also. Okay. So we had uh, things you had, to be, you had to be in, in the house or, or, or in your community when it got dark. So you experienced something similar to that in the military. You saw it differently though, a whole different perspective that you got in the military where some people has never left this country. They only see it from what happened 200 years ago or what happened to my great grandparents, whatever. You yeah. saw it from a whole different perspective. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and even with that, um, when I go back and read some of that stuff, it throws me off when you would talk about like Harry Tub Harriet Tubman and different folks. They would always say these folks escaped to the north. And the question logically I would always have to my I would always ask myself is okay, if all white folks are racist, then how was it that black folks would be able to leave the south and go to the north and succeed? Like something just didn't sit well with me. Like common sense would kick in and be like, okay, bro, there's different groups of what they call white folks. And then I started digging in history, started finding out more about the Jews and how, you know, they had a lot more to do with a lot of what was going on with black folks than black folks really, really, really realized. And, and, I mean, that's a whole different can of worms. Again, we, we ain't gonna go into that because we sticking to the veteran stuff. But when I went back and did some reading and research and I started finding out like Jews got a lot to do with a lot more stuff, but you know, nowadays you can't talk about that because they say if you speak against a Jew, that's anti-Semitic. So, <laughs> so it's just like it's certain things you can't talk about. But then again, when I started doing my research, I started finding out where I'm from in South Carolina. We had a lot of Jews. I never knew that. I never knew how big the Jewish community was where I'm from because again, you can't talk about those folks. So it's a lot of different stuff that doesn't get mentioned or get talked about because of that, you know, and I know a lot of that is attributed to what happened with Hitler. And even when I watch some documentary about that, it's like, okay, bro, it seemed like there's something crazy about that. Cause even like the other day, me and my wife were watching it and they say Hitler was taking out the Jews. Well, we saw a guy in the documentary that was a Jew and he was a part of Hitler's army. And the only reason why he was able to blend in was because they didn't know who Jews were. They had to ask them. And if this person didn't admit that they were Jews, then they would be in the same army along with those people who were, you know, in Hitler's army. And that threw me off because I thought from the narrative I was taught, oh, he was trying to exterminate people who want blonde head and blue eyes, which there is some truth to it. But here it is. This guy wasn't blonde hair and blue eye. And here it is. He's in the army with them. So, you know, it's just like, man, the army taught me a lot, man. Like just being able to grow and go to different places, man. It's just like, I got to see a lot that it's just hard for me to go back to what was because I know what is. Okay, I like that. So basically, again, you mentioned that you had a different, whole different experience than a lot of people have. Mm -hmm. And although you left here to go in the military, you could have a different experience. Yeah. And you wanted to see something different. Because I remember when I grew up in the 60s here, I did see a lot of violence. I saw a lot of racism. I saw the difference when we were on the bus with my grandmother, how you had to step to the back of the bus. I do know that they had the signs on the, when you went downtown here in Houston, there was a signs that uh, uh, no blacks, no Jews, no dogs. I do remember those signs. I do remember yeah. the signs, but when you walked into a store, you could, own, you could pay your bill. Back then, we didn't have a lot of elevators back in the day, in the okay. early, early 60s. I was talking about like around, I, I, I was born in 56. So around 2006, I'm six and I'm seeing so much going on. I think the president would have been shot by then at that point, or Malcolm was, not Malcolm, but uh, Martin was getting ready to be killed. So I saw all of that. But the thing that I've also learned when I grew up, I was really blessed with the idea when I, because I went to work at the age of six. I mean, I was doing something at the age of six. I figured oh, wow. that I want to make my own money. I had to wait on my brothers and someone to give me 50 cents. I figured out how I would make that. But I do remember all of that growing up here in Houston. But at the same time, I remember working in department stores and how the people treated me, uh, the things, the training that I got. And 
Uh, I remember there's a big store here in Houston. It's called Sacraments. Well, Sacraments all the first were. Big, it's a big store. And there was like seven floors in the store. And this, this store would hold parties back in the day. And I remember when there, I was doing display and, and gourmet foods and wines. And the owner of Sackwoods came to me and gave me training for gourmet foods and wines. I'm only 16. I just happen to have a job doing display. So I like that what you're saying because everyone is not going to have the same narrative. Yeah. Everyone's not going to have the same experience. And that's one thing I, I like about my life is that you had to keep it open because things that you experienced, man, I wish I got a chance to see that. You know, they gave us, when I joined the military, they gave us that little list. Uh, they, call it, they call it a wish, wish sheet, I think. Wish list, something like yeah, that. Yeah, I remember that. I Trust remember me, that. that was a wish. <laughs> that was only a wish. <laughs> but I like what you're talking about because in your age group, going to Afghanistan, you know, like when I saw that, I think that was in the early 90s, 91, 92. I think we finally saw when they started bombing. It was on TV. I think I was going to college at the time. I was in Florida. But your whole experience being able to see different people, yeah. different uh just different, everything was just different. Like you're talking about people making mud housing, you know, like yeah. building their house out of mud. Yeah. And you don't see that here. You see people that maybe on the freeway, but you don't see that. And people yeah. here, you do have some type of people can come out and give you food, like that, all yeah. the organizations that feed people. But there you're saying hey, there was nothing, no, no resource. No, not at all. Not at all. Nah, you don't, you don't see that over there at all. And a lot of what you're saying about like seeing things differently, yeah, I see it that way. But I do have former battle buddies that I know of that they don't see it like that. Like they experience what they say was racism, and 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 sometimes it baffles me because I'm right along with these same guys. Some of the people that they said um were racist, I didn't see it like that because I remember one of the guys um I won't mention his name, but they said it was racist. I remember I was supposed to get a DUI with a couple of other high ranking NCOs. And this same white guy that they said were racist, he came and got us out of trouble. So to me, it's just like, okay, how is he racist if he had opportunity to where he could have gotten us in trouble? He took that opportunity to help us out. Not only that, he was my actual sergeant while being in Afghanistan. The same guy that I know folks who call them racist. And that's why I'm saying like, sometimes I don't, I, I don't know. Huh? That's not to say it doesn't exist. That's not to say things like that don't happen. But the way I see it is if you have hatred, which is sin in your heart, you're going to dislike people. People dislike people growing up in the black community because of status, which means you don't have on Jordans, I have them on. I went through that in high school. Like I remember being bullied or talked about or teased and there wasn't no white folks around. This was happening with people who look just like me all because, you know, they look at it like we all have different social status within our own community. Going back to a lot of stuff you talked about with different, you know, shades of black. Like I grew up where like my family is all from the same area, but the light skinned folks and the dark skinned folks, we treat each other different. Now, I didn't notice that until I got older, but I used to be like, why are these folks, like, you know, one side of the Ford family don't deal with the other side of the Ford family? Then I start learning Black history of, you know, things like the comb test to where, you know, if your hair went in silky press and it was nappy, down, like, I start learning that stuff. And I'm like, oh, okay, so that's why that exists. So, again, <laughs> my perspective and the way I see things is totally different because of my experience. And that's I like the same that. way it is that's with the military. Okay, that's very true because I know when I was in the military, my experience, well, I for me, just for me, I did experience a lot of racism in the military because I did not know that, although there was not with every white person, like when I grew up here in Houston, it was not with every white person. Yeah. And sometimes I've seen a lot of my own people, if I asked a question, like I was in Louisiana, and that was in 1975 or 76. Okay. And I asked on the base why there were no blacks working in the stores. I was told you can't ask that question. And when uh, 
the KKK was marching outside the base, I was told I could not leave the base. I left the base. Wow. But then sometimes when you when you go through these issues in life, you think that everyone's going to support you. Everyone's not going to support you. Yeah. Because we all have a different reason why we're where we are yeah. or what we are doing. Because I didn't, I didn't, I'll be honest with you, I did not really drink. I did drink, but not a lot. I volunteered a lot. Being in the Air Force, I was blessed to the bases I was assigned to. So my job was like from seven to three. And then if I didn't work the night, the day shift, I worked the night shift, 11 okay. to seven, something like that. So I had a good experience with that because I always had a job. I, I, <laughs> not very many people in the service always had two jobs. I always had two jobs. And wow. I was blessed with that. So everyone's story is not going to be the same. All our yeah. experiences are not going to be the same. I like the fact that I feel that we both are blessed in the yes, sense sir. that we look at people as, as they are. Yeah. Not as what we heard like in the news, what's going on, uh, that type of thing, or what's happened in the past, where are we right now? Yeah. A lot of people are trying to make those changes within yeah. themselves. Yeah. yeah I no, saw that when I was, yeah. No, no, I mean, I'd say, because you, you speak in volumes, because I mean, if I was to let that stuff that um, make me think a certain way, I wouldn't be a disabled veteran receiving benefits from the VA. I wouldn't be doing a lot of the things that I'm doing or trying to do with the VA because in some cases, I do see where Black veterans are not honored on the same system as, you know, different nationalities, especially when you walk through the VA, like you see sprinkles of, you know, Black veterans here and there. So, you know, I do get that there's still some things that may not be like fully integrated like it should be. But for me, that still doesn't take away from the fact that I have to love my neighbor, you know, because, again, I mean, as a believer, I live with the mindset it's a believer versus non-believers. Like, you know, what I'm, saying? I'm still stuck in a situation like that, because when you tell people you're a Christian, brother, that's not always a good thing, especially now in America, where, you know, most people think Christians rob people, pastors aren't real no more. Like, it's so many different elements that you deal with, even, I mean, Jesus, people hate him because he was trying to do good. You know, the Jews hate him. His, his own people hated him. So it's just like, I understand that's just a part of life, but that still doesn't take away from my obligation, my responsibility as an individual to love people, regardless. Like, I may not agree with them, but that has nothing to do with my love for you. Like, I can see somebody yeah. living a total different lifestyle, but I'm still going to love. I may not like what you're doing. And again, I, I have the right to discriminate. Everybody has the right to discriminate, which is basically making a choice. Right, I want to be with you or not. Like that's my freedom. That's my rights. Like I have that right to do that. That's true. I like that. You know what? That's when we start knowing that growth also means about change. You can grow in age-wise or in time-wise, but growth sometimes is also how you feel, how yes, you sir. make those choices in your life. Not going with one particular group because of they have their own issues of why. Because yeah. there was sometimes, um, even when you go to work for companies, companies have their own policies and procedures. Yeah. That's just every company got their own yeah. policies and procedures. Yeah. And sometimes in our lives, we get with friendships or a certain family, they got their own policy and procedures yeah. as well. Who you can yeah. be associated with and who you cannot be associated with. Mm -hmm. So I, I like that because a lot of times we don't think about different perspectives of things. We just see one perspective yeah. or maybe two and that's it yeah cause i remember when i first met somebody from guam or from um samoans i met samoans like for the first time that that kind of shocked me because i never knew those people existed like when i first met them oh i almost fell out of my shoe i almost fell out but then to kind of find out there were groups of people that never saw black folks before you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. They never were around us. So again, I mean, I don't think a lot of stuff have to do with color. Sometimes this can be like, okay, you yes. not friendly. Like for me, well, I'm from um in Pauly's Island, it's it's diverse. But then when I moved to Plantersville, because Plantersville is in the country, there was a line between black and white folks. And yes, where I'm from, the black and white folks didn't mingle or mix. That's not to say we didn't talk, but if you didn't live around where they're from, they just didn't mingle and mix with everybody. So I have people from there that never been around white folks. So the first time they get around them, they don't know how to deal with being around those type of folks. Whereas for me, because I'm 
actually, like I, like I said, I grew up in Plantersville, but my folks are actually from Pauley's Island, which is more diverse. My best friend, my first best friend, um, Chris, he was white. Same birthday, everything. Me and him was the best friends. Crazy thing about it, his step pops, Bubba, Bubba fl flew a Confederate flag. But never one time did Bubba ever treat me bad. If anything, I remember we needed anything. Bubba always, hey, Pam, you need this, you need that. Like, he was just loving. Bubba took care of us. Only thing we knew about Bubba is Bubba's a crazy white dude who liked to drink beer. <laughs> hey, that's Bubba's gonna like be loud. That. But the one thing about Bubba, because we lived on the certain side of the road, Bubba didn't let no foolishness happen on the road. If people were coming down there making loud, um, making noise with loud music, driving dirt bikes, different things down that road, Bubba go out there, he didn't care what color he was. He, hey, don't come down here with all that noise, da 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 But he protected our neighborhood. And this is the same guy that flew the Confederate flag that people told me was racist. So again, like I said, my experience is different. My first roommate, Clocks. I never forget a name, and I don't mean to say his name, but I have to say it. He was from North Carolina. He had a Confederate flag. Got in the room. I, 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 that was my first roommate in Korea. We were in the room together, and the first thing he asked me, he's like, "Bro, you offended by this flag?" Like he asked me. Like he didn't just leave the flag in the room. I'm like, "Clocks." First of all, for me, I didn't know much about it, so it was hard for me to have a certain ideal about what that flag. I'm like, dude, I don't care nothing about that. I, I, I don't have no feeling, no hard feelings towards you about that. But that same guy took me around and showed me Korean. Okay. He gave me food, all these different things. So again, my experience was totally different. And I thank God for that because again, I got to see that people are people. And no matter where we come from, we all had the same heart. We all have the same undergarments, which is our soul, our blood, all these things. We, we, we the same people, man. We uh, Deep down inside, we all the same. It's just we we have difference of opinions, views, and this, that, and the third, but that's what makes us human. That's true. I like that. I think it was a lot different when we experienced things in our life. It gave us something different than I know when going to the military, most veterans, because a lot of people did not know I was a veteran for years, not until I came here to Houston. No one knew I was a veteran, nor did I tell people I was a veteran, because when you, at the, at, when Vietnam closed, we were told, don't tell people that you're a veteran, because there was no, people saw the, the movies came out, uh, the whole look of the, the veteran. I remember when I was stationed certain places, even to fly back home, they said, take your uniform out. Before you get to the airport, take your uniform out because I remember the 60s very well. I remember the 60s and everything we was going through, but that was in the 60s. That's not in 20. Now we did go through a moment. I think with with the raid on uh, on on the White House. I think it was a January when they had that raid on the White House and the people and all the flags. You know what? I'm also, that was not all of America that was there. Yeah. And when people look at certain things, they put all people in a certain particular group, like with us, being black maybe, or being Asian here in this country. And you put them all in a certain, because someone made a movie at some point, they made a movie, and that was the writer to create that narrative of that show. So you can watch that show and you can feel a certain way about that race of people or maybe just not the race of people, the show itself. Yeah. At the beginning of the show, the middle and the end. And I think a lot of times we do that with people. But I've met some great people when I was in the service. I was blessed as a kid growing up in, uh, I think, I believe it was, I believe Sack was Jewish. But not the fact that they were Jewish, they were good people. Yeah. And being a kid, when you're coming from the hood and being having experience, someone showing you how to make a tie or providing you with a tie the shirts, the, the training. So we all gonna have a different different look at life. But man, your, your story is amazing about veterans and how you feel now. And we don't always have to be included. We, yeah. don't, we, we, we don't. Yeah, and a, lot, and a lot of what you're saying, even going back to some of the stuff you were saying about like just being accepted as, as a veteran, it's still sort of that same way and it was for my time. Cause I know we got back from Afghanistan you know, you got your group that love us being downrange in that war. And then you have the other side that they think all we do over there is go kill babies. And I like, man, folks don't really understand what 
we call war is really about because my experience at what they call war is not the same as the movies and the things that they put on TV. Like my experience was we were over there doing a job. And these same folks they call Taliban and all these different stuff, sometimes these were the people that I worked side by side with. You know what I'm saying? These, sometimes these same Afghan local people were the same ones that were giving me shy tea, lamb meat on pita bread. And I was kind of confused because I'm thinking like, okay, well, on the news and TV, they said we fighting crime, we fighting war against the Taliban. I get over there, that's not what's happening. When I got attacked and things happened for me over there, it was more so from the perspective of we went over there, took over their farmland because we wanted to build our bases in certain areas. And our country had deals going on on the low key the way they were supposed to be paying these people a certain amount of money. And always, I know because I was over there, um, even though I was a diesel mechanic over there, I was with engineers. And engineers, we build everything. So every place we go, we get to deal with the locals. We get to meet the people village elders and different stuff because they all wear different turbans with different colors to describe who is who and what rank they are, da da da, like little things like that. Average people are looking at their turban don't even know that, but that's stuff I learned from just the time I was over there. And a lot of times when those people come to our gates, and medicine, I need my money, but I don't know what you're talking about. Get to me someone. So I call up to, you know, where I'm up to my top. Hey, man, we got this guy sitting at the gate asking about some money. They tell us, hey, man, we ain't got his money. Tell him get out of here. So, hey, we do that. A couple of hours later, we sitting at the um, ECP, which is in control point. We looking, we start seeing clouds of smoke. When we see that, we know, hey, we about to get hit. Soon as we do shift change, all of a sudden, mortar rounds landing. So when a lot of times I went through certain things, it was because of things like that. That's not to say all the time that's what it was because other times it was all about us being over there because again, no folks don't want us over there, man. And that's what led up to them pulling everybody out of there because them folks don't want us over there in their country police and stuff. And what made me think about certain things, I'm thinking like, okay, in America, who come over from another country police our business? Like we got a lot of police brutality, uh, not a lot, but we got that going on. We got gang violence in neighborhoods. Like we got a lot of different things that goes on in our country, but no one comes over here and helps us with that. Why? Because they're not allowed to. So how are we allowed to go everywhere else and try to police the world, but the world can't come police us? That oh, don't no. exist to me. So <laughs> of course that's gonna start war. Because I mean, think about it. It's like a relationship. If it's one sided, at some point you ain't gonna like this relationship. Especially if you feel like I'm giving everything, you ain't giving me nothing back. Then of course <laughs> it's gonna that's cause true. friction. So that's how I look at war. That's not to say that there aren't so many different things going on within that that I may not understand. But from the perspective that I got to see things, it's just like, man, it's more to this than what meets the eye. And more than what the news, movies, and all these other stuff tell. Now, am I in support of the troops who died over there? Yes. I lost a guy like Sergeant Wallace. I know a guy named, you know, Lopez. You know, I know of, um, a female named Brown and different folks that, you know, died, then come back, got hurt badly. Sergeant Red, like, I know folks. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not, you know, taking away from the fact that we got people over there fighting and losing their lives. No. I take that to heart because I, I was in the trenches with these folks. I, you know, I know what it takes to be over there to fight what we call war. But it hurts a little different because when you get to see what I saw or go through what I went through, it's like, bro, we used to have this model where we used to always say, man, we all we got. Because truly, that's all we had. It wasn't our country that was backing us, even though they sent us over there. It was just us, the people who were over there together, like prisoners. Like, that, that's really how I felt. Like, we were just paid prisoners. And I'm not going to equate what we went through as prison, but, like, it felt like that at times. Because we isolated. We away from family. We away from everything that we love and know. And when you come back, none of that stuff is the same when you go over after you come back from over there. You numb. You don't feel the same things. Like, I remember watching so many body bags go into our um, board or whatever to the point that we're now I'm numb to funerals. So when family members die, I don't have no feelings towards that because I've seen so much of that. That don't mean I always saw people, I, I didn't see people die per se, but I remember, you know, at times when we lost 22 soldiers, again, something that didn't make the news. 
And I remember sitting at the flight line for an hour and all we doing is sitting there saluting and watching them bring these bodies in. And this was sometimes daily of them bringing soldiers in and all we can do is sit there and salute. Cause I was at this place called Fog Oregon Eve. It's a lot mm -hmm. of, uh, to go through to experience that. Mm -hmm. Then turn around, get to Cuba. Guess what I had to do? Save the Afghan guy life. But at this point, I remember this guy hung himself when I was in Gitmo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so one minute I go from being in the fight to where now I'm instead of fighting for my country, now I'm fighting for this Afghan y'all. You know, because at the end of the day, they're human. And get over here in Cuba, now I got to fight for this guy. That's true, but that's that is kind of like life because if you don't have those different, it's like having a meal, right? If you only ate food from your community when you grew up, your mom, someone cooked you food, and that's that's what you taste, that's what you eat. But if that's all you ever had to eat, that's all you know as the best food in the life. But when you've had other different types of food, yeah. other tastes, like you did in different countries, different experience with people, places, things. Your taste is totally different than someone else's taste. Yeah. If they spent their whole life in that city, in that perspective of that city, that's all they're gonna know. So whatever you're gonna talk about, they're not gonna really understand it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and that's natural because that's how that's how the world works. I mean, that's not something that's abnormal. That's normal. That's how it really works, and that's how things really are. And I and I'll be honest, one of the things I do look back at, and I wish that would happen was or what would happen is I wish that in America that instead of incarcerating, mass incarcerating a lot of these people, I wish they would put them in the military, get them that structure because I think with most people, they really need structure because one of the untalked about things in our country is broken families. Like folks don't talk about that. Like overseas, I got the experience seeing people grow up in tradition to where the oldest son is still taking care of the parents. Whereas in America, that's the thing that you may not see, especially in the black community. Like there aren't too many fathers at home. There aren't no real structure, family dynamic that is happening in most communities. In those communities that, where that stuff is happening in, the crime rate is very high. And I believe a lot of that's because of no structure, which the only person that can truly, truly give you structure is a father. I know society makes them seem like you can get that from one. And I'm not saying moms don't do a great job and they can't do certain things, but I do believe that you do need a father. I mean, I mean, science say that. Why? Because you can't just have a baby by yourself. It takes two to tango for you to have a baby. So if it takes two, to, to, you know, to commit the act of a sexual activity to have a baby, then I think it takes that same thing to raise a baby too. Because again, biologically, science it teaches you that through the act of sex, like it takes two to make that baby. Like it's not like one can do it without the other. They both need each other. That's true. And I think that also that that particular part of it, I was blessed to have a great stepdad. I know my dad that well, but I know he came from a really good family, but my stepdad, ex-military army, he was in Germany, great stepdad. I mean, that, I really, to me, that's, that's my dad because he was always there. I saw him do things like how he took care of my, myself and my three sisters, how he moved us into a home. Uh, I, I remember him a lot. So when I when I had a, I had great jobs as a kid, but when I wanted to get away because of him, because I saw when, he, when I saw things that he had from Germany, little things, places, different places he was stationed, those were things only that when you grew up in like, I don't care if you're from Houston, whatever city you made from, but that's all you see there. You want to see something different, like a different food. I want to taste something different. Yes, and that's how.